What tools did I pay for and what tools were given to me? Today, all will be revealed and we'll tally up the totals at the end. I'm a little worried. I'm a little worried. And today's video is brought to us by Squarespace. We'll start right here by the front door. We'll work our way around the perimeter and end up at the table saw. The table saw is a little complicated. I'll explain later. Here with the Laguna 14BX 220 volt bandsaw. I have two bandsaws because I want one set up for curves and the other set up for resawing. It saves me a lot of time. This guy I paid for, it cost $1,999. Why do I use expensive tools that the average DIYer doesn't have? I'll justify my reasons when we get down to the next corner. Moving on down the line is my little bandsaw. This is the Rikon 10305. I did pay for this and this was $299. Out of all the tools that I have in my shop, I probably recommend this one the most just because it's affordable and it's got a really good cutting capacity for a benchtop bandsaw. I use this all the time. Next is my six inch joiner. This is the Rikon 2106. I did pay for this. This retails for $1,599. Up next, we're gonna talk about some of my digital tools that I did not pay for. My build videos now focus more on the challenge of a project. I wanna force myself to think bigger and I wanna be the most creative woodworker on YouTube. I wanna bring you along with me on that journey. Some of these recent videos have done very well and some have totally tanked. It's a learning process. And these tools, they're not the focus of my videos. I wanna use a tool that's going to get the idea from my brain to the physical world with the least resistance possible. The focus is on the challenge and being creative. And the side effect is we all learn and grow together. That being said, let me show you my most expensive tool in the shop. This is the Rayjet R400 by Trotec. This cost $9,900. They did give it to me to use in the videos. I love using the digital tools. This is, this thing is absolutely amazing. Next is my Stepcraft CNC. This is the Stepcraft M1000. This cost $4,699. And Stepcraft did supply this to me to use in the videos. I've been working with Stepcraft for a long time. They make amazing woodworking CNCs. Okay, enough with the digital tools. Let me show you the crap load of sanders that I have. I got the Harbor Freight disc sander, the Ryobi belt sander, the Harbor Freight spindle sander, and the Supermax 1632 drum sander. I hate sanding, so I will spend a lot of money on things that make sanding easier for me. All of them purchased with my own money that I made by selling drugs. There's one more thing over here. This is the vacuum press. It cost $927 that I paid for with my own money. You've been seeing me do a lot of vacuum press veneering and vacuum press lamination and crazy wood shapes. This has quickly become one of my favorite tools in the shop. It allows me to be super creative and I paid for it with my own money. Up next is my Jet 1221 lathe. I did pay for this. It comes to $900 and $99. I've outgrown this and I need to do bigger turnings. So soon I will sell this and get something a little bit bigger. Probably the Nova. I've got my eye on the Nova. And speaking of Nova, this is my Nova drill press. You're gonna notice some colorful walls and I've got a drop ceiling in here and a carpeted floor. This is a two car garage that we basically converted into an office. And then I had some artist friends do some fun things here in the shop. This is my creative space. When I walk into here, I wanna feel that creative energy. I don't want tools hanging on the wall because like I said, it is not about the tools. This is my favorite place to be is right here in my shop. I've got carpet, so it's comfortable on my feet. It's also, it deadens the sound, so the sound doesn't reverberate. I got an acoustical drop ceiling in here to help with the sound. And I just, it's, it's comfortable in here. This is not like any other wood shop you have ever seen. This is about me. I don't want to show off the tools. I don't want tools on the wall. I don't want tools to be the focus. I want the creativity to be the focus. And this is my shop. Basically what I'm trying to say is this is my shop. I get to do what I want in my shop. Anyway, 
Back to the drill press. This is the Nova Viking drill press. It's a bench top drill press. It costs $1,199. I ordered this from Amazon and the freight company screwed up and they couldn't deliver it to me. They said they couldn't get a hold of me for some reason, so they returned it and I got refunded. Somebody at Nova saw this. They contacted me and said, hey, we're a fan of your videos. We'll sell you one for a $300 discount. Here we are. I got lucky. There's some cool features about this drill press. You can have it auto start. You can set the depth digitally. It's really cool. Go watch the video if you want to learn more about it. It's really cool. All right, moving along to this crazy thing. This is the Nextwave RS1000 Pro. I'm not gonna get into a lot of the details because I just put out a video all about this thing, but it's like a router from the future. A computer controls the fence placement and the bit height. And then there's apps built into there to do a whole bunch of crazy joinery. It is mind-blowingly bonkers. I haven't spent a lot of time with it yet, but the time that I have used it, it's it's kind of mind-blowing. It costs $1,700. They are a local company and they did provide this to me. In this corner is my Festool Capex miter saw. I have absolutely no affiliation with them and I paid $1,599 for it. I make no apologies. Everybody freaks out about the price of the Capex and how it costs like four times more than any other miter saw. The reason I chose the Capex is it has the best dust collection out of any miter saw in the history of miter saws. Every single magazine shootout puts this at number one in dust collection. And you can do dados with it. You kidding me? You kidding me right now? You wanna keep giving me shit for paying $1,599 for a miter saw when my biggest concern here in the shop is my health and my safety, and this collects more dust than any other miter saw that you can get. I make no apologies. I'm taking my paint with me. In all seriousness, I hope this video doesn't come across as a brag that is not the point of this video. There's a lot of assumptions that happen in the comments and I thought, you know what, let's just make a video and let's just clear it up. Let's just like, let's just be super honest here. I know what it's like to not have anything. Like we grew up fairly poor. We qualified for free lunches in school. And then in high school, I had to wear the same clothes to school every single day. So, uh, you know, in my late twenties, I just decided, you know what, fuck it. I'm going to go to college and I'm going to try to do something with my life. And between that and a lot of luck, a lot of luck played into this, there's no doubt. I accept that I got lucky in some certain situations and here we are. So this is not a brag. This is, this is just a conversation. It's just a conversation. I appreciate those of you who understand and know what I'm trying to get across here. Thank you. Before I get to the last two major tools, I'd like to show you what's behind this door right here. I've been using Squarespace for over 10 years, long before they were a sponsor and long before I was doing this full time. I actually used to be a full time web developer for a local ad agency and I'm so glad that I don't have to do any of that anymore and I can focus on cool stuff like playing with my tools and making some cool things. Squarespace can do the same for you to allow you to focus on what matters. The cool thing about Squarespace is they have a number of features to make your life a lot easier. Let's say you want to have image galleries of your work to show off to get new clients or just because you want to post your stuff up on the internet. You can do that. You can have a calendar where potential clients can book time with you. You can have a members only password protected area of your website for your secret little woodworking community. You can sell both digital and physical items just like I do. And you can bring in all your social media feeds into one central place. You can have a contact form. Your online presence is all in one central place hub. Seriously, Squarespace makes my life so much easier. I can focus on the cool, fun stuff while they handle all the code, the back end, the cloud. Like you don't have to know any of that jargon. None of that. So visit squarespace.com. And when you're ready to launch, visit squarespace.com slash make something for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you, Squarespace, for making videos like this possible. Now let's close this up and go check out the last two tools. 
I really, I was very hesitant to show you what was back there, but it's time. The truth has been revealed. I forgot all about my handheld power tools. I'm not gonna go through them all, just the notable ones. Got the Festool Domino at $1,199. I got the Festool Jigsaw at $445 and the Festool Sander at $575. All of these hook up to the Festool Dust Extractors which cost $799. I've got two of them and speaking of dust collection, I've got four of these Dust Right dust collectors. One was given to me by Rockler and three I paid for at $399. And the last hidden power tool, not in plain sight, is my Shaper Origin for $2,899. And of course, I paid for it. Up next is my planer. It is a Rikon model number. Doesn't matter because they don't make this model number anymore. I don't know why. It is a 16 inch Rikon planer helical head in there i paid two thousand six hundred and ninety nine dollars for it with my own money i got the big 16 inch so i could mill up more boards at a time because time is money especially when i'm paying an expensive cameraman to walk around and film me all day you're expensive daniel and then the table saw. This is a tool that I use more than any other tool in the shop. I bought the 1.75 horsepower saw stop table saw for $2,849. They reached out to me and said, would you like to upgrade to the three horsepower saw? And so I got the free upgrade. Safety is my number one concern. I don't see myself ever using any other brand of table saw just because it has that flesh sensing technology. We're building another shop, uh, the minimalist shop. And even that one is probably going to have the saw stop contractor table saw in there. I've modified mine just a little bit. I've added these just some hold downs to the fence here. And then I built this crosscut sled right here. I've got a whole video on this guy. This greatly increases the productivity here in my shop. It's one of the most satisfying builds. You might want to go check that out. That is a really fun video. It like just extends the capability of my table saw. This is, I'm, am I bragging about the, this? Yes, I am bragging about this because I can't tell you how satisfying this was. The outfeed table, uh, I started reworking. It's not done. This isn't even attached. Like I can just move this around. I still need to cut grooves in there for my sleds. I'm so behind on so many things. <sighs> Shop furniture is not my, not my thing. Making cool shit is my thing. Before I tell you, before I tell you why I no longer accept free tools, I just want to address all the new people who came in who were curious about YouTubers and the free tools that we get. If you're new here, this channel is all about having fun. This isn't like any other woodworking channel out there. I love going to the department store or the antique mall or the thrift store and finding things and transforming them. We've got some crazy projects coming up in the future where we turn things into wood. I believe that the videos that I've made here in 2023 are the best videos that I've ever made. I'm re-energized. I'm having so much fun with these transformations. And every once in a while, we just like to do silly stuff, like buy every single woodworking ad that we saw on Facebook and reviewing those terrible products. So if you're new here, you might want to subscribe because the long-term viewers here know that it is all about fun and creativity and challenging ourselves. Over the last few years, I stopped taking free tools for the most part. There's been a couple of exceptions because I need to make money. My dogs are hungry. I eat a lot. Free tools don't pay the bills. So, and a lot of times when a company wants to send you a free tool, they expect you to do a review and use that tool in your shop. And I just don't want that obligation. I like to be able to cross out logos when I want to. Like I said, it's not about the tool, it's about the challenge and it's about the creativity. And it's also about safety.